I was just going to say, if you have a native, tell us your name. My name is John Scheipel, a consulting CTO, freelance CTO. Uh, so, if you have a native application, are you therefore like forced into adaptive just because you have a website version, then you have a native iPhone? That you're by definition, you're adaptive. Then it's a great question. Yeah, you. It really kind of depends. I've seen some instances where. Um, people will have a native app, but it's not really an app. Really what it is is an HTML5 um, app that's not native, really. But, so, inside, the app. but inside of the App Store. Um, so you could do that technically in Responsive. I actually think that that's a good idea. I tell clients all the time that, you know, step one is have some method of getting on mobile. And it doesn't always have to be an app. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper to do a responsive website that works on mobile first. And then you've at least addressed a mobile audience. And then later on, if time, scope, and budget you know, afford itself, then we can build you an app too. And if you do it right, you could have like a back end set of web services that then serve up that same content uh, to the actual app. So Diego, um, you have a few points of view as to why a client should choose to do one or the other, which is what John just asked. Why should a client choose one strategy versus the other? Well, I think in general, I agree with what Chris was saying in that you should try and first start with the mobile website as opposed to a native app. And the reason is that you're going to need to manage multiple code bases if you start doing native apps. And people often underestimate the amount of effort uh, both at the beginning and over a long period of time of maintaining multiple code bases. Um, in a way, uh, you know, doing the, the, the ubiquitous design is a way of trying to man manage that by at least not having multiple designs, but instead having one design that you can adapt to the multiple ones. Um, just to clarify something you, you said, John, when we talk about adaptive or responsive design, at least to me, those are HTML5 words or HTML words. Uh, so when you're going into talking about native apps, it, I mean, it, it, it depends, but... Um, Why should there be that? Well, because there's specific mechanisms that are used to make, to implement one or the other that are really HTML code that we're talking about. But for example, if you're doing an iOS app, you, uh, just by the way it's already laid out for you by Apple, you, you kind of have to do adaptive and you have essentially one a set of uh, storyboards for for uh, you know your iPhone, another set of storyboards for, for your iPad, right? To some degree, the iPhone one maybe ha helps to accommodate a couple of form factors, you know, the smaller screen, the bigger screen, but but essentially you're doing adaptive design, but we're, you're not doing the the you're not doing it the HTML way. You're you're simply redrawing everything, right? But I think that the principle of what we're trying to get to here is. Uh, you should try and think when you design that you may one day make this a native app as well, uh, whether it be on Android or in iOS or in something else, Windows or whatever comes up next. So keep that in mind when you design, but stick to HTML5 first unless your business really justifies doing something else.